Hello and welcome to the video. In this video, we're taking a look here at the TS215. This is the Yushin Wizard, and a lot of other reviewers have already had a look at it, but I've had a couple of requests from subscribers who want me to have a look, so here it is. And interestingly, looking at this model that I've only just received and some of the other reviewers' versions of the reviews as well, it looks like Eashin have updated some of the components to address some of the original feedback that those first reviews gave. So in this video, we'll quickly go through the specs. We'll go through the unboxing, show you how it goes together, quick view of the setup. I'll show you some of the mods that I've done. Some of the decisions that Eashin have taken with this model are a little bit wacky. Uh, I'm not personally a fan of some of that stuff, but it is fixable. And I've done those mods here. I'll show you how to do them. And then a bit of flying footage and summary at the end. So let's talk about the specs. This is a 250 millimeter 3K carbon fiber quadcopter. The top plate is about three millimeters. The frame arms are about four millimeters thick. The bottom plate thickness is about three mil two. Comes with this camouflage covering on, which is quite nice. Glad it's not jungle camo, otherwise you'd never find it when it landed in the grass. And available with an XM Plus receiver. This one is here and also as a receiverless one. And it comes with a little servo plug. You just plug into whichever S Plus receiver you want to use yourself. Be aware the XM Plus as supplied was the international version of the firmware. So if you're a pilot here in the EU, you're going to have to flash it with the EU firmware. 40 amp ESCs. The ESCs are really nice, actually. They uh, work very, very well indeed and support up to D-Shot 1200 and up to 2 to 6S. The motors are really nice. TS-2306s, 2450 brushless motors, support again 2 to 6S and will give pretty phenomenal thrust if you stick it on a 4S battery with something like a 6x4 prop. In fact, I've actually got some other motors here. I'll put uh, links in the description to both these things that I'm quite impressed with. These are the new Race Star ones from Banggood that I've also got and I'm going to be using this in another quadcopter building for beginner series starting shortly. Um, a lot of these motors are very open so just be aware of that when you're flying in particularly gritty or crappy conditions. If you have a nasty crash there's going to be an awful lot of gubbins is going to get inside your quadcopter and it's amazing how much of the grit in parks and playing fields is actually ferrous metal that's rusted to almost nothing. If you get that inside, then you're going to have to strip your motors and sort them out. All that said, the motors work very well. F4 base flight controller. I'll show you a quick picture here of what it looks like. If you take all the components off the quad, and we're going to do that in a second anyway, here is the main board at the bottom that does all of the stuff. It's the power distribution board. It has the SD card for the black box. There's an F4 base processor on there. It's running a pretty standard beta flight target, so it's nothing exotic. But I'm not a huge fan of having a PCB like this that's fundamental to the flying of the craft as part of the one of the structural elements in the frame and also it means that you it's a lot harder to upgrade this frame if in future you want to try another flight controller or want to change things around. VTX at the top it will support everything from 25 to I think and whacking 800 milliwatts and the channel assignments are pretty standard too. Uh, I have just been playing with it with a button but it's stated that it also supports smart audio. So let's talk a little bit about how this thing comes in the box. The box is probably the nicest one that I've e seen from Eashin. They're really stepping up their branding and shipping of the products. Um, I love this new logo that they've come out with. It looks like they're really stepping up and moving out of their roots as kind of a kit bashing outfit. Cyclone props, very nice. A big fan of Cyclone, so it's nice to see them in here. Two different colours. Then you get some cable ties, you'll need those. There are the battery straps. Uh, there's two battery straps, and I would recommend you use both of them. You get this little CNC'd AK47 keychain thing. Uh, not sure I'm going to use that, but that's quite cute. Couple of little spanners cut from carbon fiber as well. Really nice touch. Some foam feet. The battery protector at the bottom. Uh, with feet to go on the battery protector. I actually use those feet to protect the battery instead couple of anti-slip things for the battery itself. Uh, we have a little antenna. This is one of the things that we're going to change in a while. Unfortunately, it's RPSMA antenna, which is a bit of a shame for me. Quite stubby. Looks very similar to the TBS one. I'm sure that's by accident. <clears throat> and then we have a bag of spare screws and then the main event. So when you pull it out of the box, it does absolutely look the part. The way it's all put together, uh, these motors, again, 
very, very big open spaces here to get stuff in. The windings are pretty nicely done. Soldering's pretty good too. Mine had a little bit of what felt like hot glue on it. I think that's just from the packaging. There's that PCB board at the bottom. That's the flight controller, SD card and everything else. And then above that is the DVR. It's got a little DVR on here as well. And on top is the VTX. So there's the SD card for black box and the VTX comes out here on the side. Unfortunately, it covers up the USB port, which is a bloody silly thing to do. The DVR is one of the big changes in this latest edition of this model. The DVR in the original one had lots of problems, particularly around latency and degradation of the image. This one is an awful lot better, but I'm personally not a fan of having anything extra between me and the camera. They've upgraded this camera from some of the other reviews that I've seen, and it's now a Runcam Swift camera, and that produces a really nice image. You can see the XM Plus at the top, held on with a little bit of double-sided foam, and pop a zip tie over the top of that to stop that coming down and hitting the top of the VTX if you have a bit of a tough landing. So the first thing we'll do then is we'll plug it into Betaflight. I'm gonna have to try and work that antenna cable out the way so I can get a USB cable plugged in and of course you have to connect it to Betaflight to make sure that you have all of the Betaflight settings right for the receiver and the radio before you power it up so it's really crazy that they've actually managed to put a cable right in front of that and a stiff cable at that. For the purposes of the first test I am going to install the antenna I'm going to move the antenna because, in my humble opinion, it's just simply too low. It's nice to have it this low if it kind of bounces around in nasty crash. It is quite low profile and the antenna is protected, but the whole idea of the antenna is to kind of have it up away from the quad so that as you're flying around, it isn't obscured at any point. And there is a chance with this smaller antenna that that's going to happen. Again, a bit sad that it's RPSMA. I'm going to have to get a little adapter because all of my antennas here are SMA. I'm a fat shark guy and I've been a fat shark guy for seven or eight years, so I'll have to just figure that out. On to beta flight config, nothing surprising in here at all. Everything is set up. The barometer is enabled by default too. The barometer is actually at the front of the flight controller, not covered by foam, so it's going to be neither use nor ornament really. But let's face it, most of us don't fly with the barometer enabled anyway. Ports, we have UART1 uh, enabled for the S bus. We have UART3 set for TBS Smart Audio so that we can change the VTX from the OSD, which is nice. DSHOT 600 set up for everything. 8K gyro frequency, 2K P loop, LED strips turned on, and the on-screen display is enabled as well. That's what the tuning out the box looks like, pretty standard stuff. And there are no modes set by default, so you are going to have to go into Betaflight to set it up. And you're definitely going to have to go into Betaflight to set up the on-screen display, because the way it comes, everything turns on. And if you try to fly like this, you'd probably have some kind of seizure. So let me talk about the mods that I've done here. The first mod is to remove that DVR. Now the way it works is the camera plugs into the DVR and then the DVR plugs into the main board at the bottom at the, this front port. Take off the VTX and then remove the DVR, unplugging the cables from each. And then what you need to do is just swap those cables around. On the left hand side, there's the three cables coming from the camera going into the four pin that goes into the DVR. And there is the three pin that goes from the DVR into the main board. You just need to lift up the little tabs with a pin, pull them out and configure them so it is the right way around. So hopefully by the time you've done it, it looks like that at the back of the camera and you can plug that camera back into that front port where the DVR was plugged into. While I had the VTX off, it occurred to me that I had an opportunity to also fix the other thing that was bugging me with this model. And that was to move the VTX 90 degrees so the cable would come towards the back and I would also then be able to get unfettered access to the USB port for settings. Be careful when you are removing the DVR, it has some blooming huge capacitors on either side that's what those two white cylinders are and even when the power's turned off there's actually voltage on this thing for a very long time the little red led stays lit uh, mine was staying lit for about 35 minutes after I disconnected the battery so be very careful when you're moving this around that um, you're conscious that it is actually live 
Once I did that, then I decided I was going to mount the antenna at the back of the model and had to 3D print this piece. If you want me to pop this piece on Thingiverse, let me know. It allows me to connect the antenna up the back part of the model and plug it all together with an extra cable tie for security. That did, unfortunately, leave the original connector out at the side, but I thought, you know what, I'll just leave that on. I'm not too bothered about that for the testing. So that is all of the settings done. Let's talk about how it flies. And surprise, surprise, it flies very, very well indeed. I don't think I'm the first reviewer to talk about what a beautiful model this is in terms of flight. The change to the camera, the upgrade to a run cam camera is very welcome. It gives a nice image. It works like any other run cam camera does. The performance of the motors and those ESCs is fab. The tune's not bad out the box. You'll probably end up having a little bit of a play. But this is running a pretty modern version of Betaflight, so the stock PIDs work great. Hovering throttle is just under a third throttle, so there's absolutely bags and bags and power, and I was flying it here on a 4S battery. So in summary, what do I think? This is a very nice quad, probably one of the nicest quads I've had from Ishin in for review. The packaging and spares are very good. I like the way they've done it. Not sure about the AK47 CNC carbon keychain thing, but each to their own. The F4 flight controller with modern beat flight installed works well. The ESC and prop combo running BL Heli 32 supporting up to D-Shot 1200 works really nicely. It's a very powerful setup. A lot of people have compared this to the Hyperlite Floss frame and you can absolutely see why if you Google those frames and have a look and see what they look like. There's an awful lot of similarities, particularly in the top deck. But the Floss frame is a super light frame designed for out and out racing. This is a floss frame that's eaten a few too many chips and hasn't been to the gym enough. It's an awful lot beefier and can take an awful lot more damage. I do like the fact that the receiver is a servo connector. That means that pretty much any receiver that's pinned that supports S-Bus, you'll be able to put in this and fly without any problem at all. And it is a lovely flyer. A couple of things to be aware of though if you're thinking of this thing, be aware that the main flight controller is a proprietary board and it's also being used as a structural part of the quad. I haven't managed to break it yet but there is a danger with that. If you want to replace it there's only one thing you can replace it with and that's an identical board. That DVR is an awful lot better than the one that was shipped with the original version and there's no real need to remove it if you really don't want to. It's just a personal choice and for me I decided to take it out. The default antenna placement is terrible, not very well thought through at all. It's better having it out at the back. And by default, the camera is supplied level, so you're going to need to tilt that little fella up to just undo the four screws on the front plastic clip, and it'll rotate easily. You will have to send, spend a bit of time in beta flight setting up the modes and on-screen display. Not sure why everything's turned on in the on-screen display. I've never seen that before, but it does mean you're going to have to work out what you want and do remember to move the sticker from the buzzer. The buzzer is installed on this model. I always like to have a buzzer on a model like this. It just helps you find it when it disappears and crashes into the hedge at the edge of the field. But by default, the sticker is still on the top. If you don't remove that sticker, you won't be able to hear it. So overall, this is a very capable quad. It's probably not the one that I'd recommend you buy as your first quadcopter. I think, again, that's the kind of thing that you're going to get something like a tiny whoop or an indoor quad. But if you're looking for a well-built quad that's quite high spec, that's going to fly well, then with all of those considerations in mind, this is definitely worth a look. If you found that video useful or like the content, then please hit the like and subscribe button down below. If you want to go the extra step, you can become a Patreon of the Painless 360 channel and help provide support for what I do here. All the videos created here are put into playlists, so if you're interested in a particular topic, have a look at the playlist, and they all are organised in there to make them easier to use. If you're not sure if there's a video for your particular problem or topic you want to know more about, then add Painless360 to the Google search term that you're interested in, and that should find the video, article, or content about the particular thing that you're interested in having a look at.